Therizinosaurus versus Segnosaurus. What in the world? Dude, is this supposed to be some kind of joke or something? How in God's mind would a Segnosaurus want to mess with something that is like three times bigger than it? It's the battle of the Reapers. Oh, and I shaved the Therizinosaurus because feathered dinosaurs are not cool. No, this is paleontology. Come on. Get the t-shirt. The Segnosaurus, well, I don't know him too well. So if he wants to stay feathered and furry, be my guest. Hey, Seggy, if you change your mind, I have a whole pack of Gillette Fusions right here. This is the wrong kind of feathering for the Segno. It's supposed to have something like this. Therizinosaurus is an extinct genus of the Therizinosaurid family that also contains... Now, normally I wouldn't suggest Jurassic World as an educational source, but uh, in the case of Therizinosaurus, it's actually okay. Things like the T-Rex and Spino and Dominion Jacket just tank it all down, but uh, Therizinosaurus depiction is good. Segnosaurus. It lived in Mongolia during the late Cretaceous period, around 70 million years ago. It was recently featured in Jurassic World Dominion. And no, the movie wasn't exaggerating. This creature really did have one meter long claws. During the early phases of its discovery, it was assumed to be a species of an aquatic turtle. Yeah, scientists back then were uh, low grade. Which is to be expected. Like Megalosaurus started off as a giant uh, lizard thingy. It all ended up as an average theropod that serves as the basis of average non-avian theropod dinosaur. After several examinations and revisions, it was given the description of a gigantic carnosaur. At the time, a family that included most large carnivorous dinosaurs. There? I don't see it. Measuring 55 feet in length. Which is just absolutely ridiculous. Therizinosaurus most likely reached 9 to 10 meters or 30 to 33 feet in length. After the discovery of related species Nothronicus, Nothronicus, yeah, the debate over its appearance ended. While its diet remains unconfirmed, Therizinosaurus was originally thought to be a carnivore. I don't see one. At the point when it was... <laughs> ...to have come from unknown Therizinosaurids, suggest it may have had a plantigrade walking stance, similar to bears and crocodiles. Well, which? They're, uh... Oh, this infamous overpowered pack hunting in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Pretty different animals. Segnosaurus was a large-bodied Therizinosaurus, yes we know this. That is estimated to have been around 7 meters long and weighed an estimated 2 tons. 6 to 7 meters long, 1.3 tons. What on earth were you even thinking when you made this video? Do you think a Segnosaurus could beat Therizinosaurus? Bro, Therizinosaurus is three times bigger. How would a Segnosaurus be able to defeat such a giant creature like that? Should be more. It's also worth mentioning the Segno had shorter claws, but still massive. Anyway, enough foreplay. Who would win in a fight? Therizinosaurus. Is this even a debate, bro? For some stats, Therizinosaurus. Height, 6 meters. No, it's 4 to 5. Length, 12 meters. That means like 40 feet, which is just still wrong. Therizinosaurus is 9 to 10 meters in length, or 30 to 33 feet. Weight, 6 tons. Over 5 tons, but I can't say for certain. Speed, scientists estimate, based on its body profile, 27 kilometers per hour. Bite force, 400 newtons. It had a beak. Claw size. One meter. Diet omnivore. Now onto the stats of Segnosaurus. Height, four meters. No, it's like three point something. Length, eight meters. No, six to seven. Weight, four tons. You said two tons. And uh, 2020 estimate is 4.17 metric tons. So I guess four tons is possible. Speed, 32 kilometers an hour. Bite force, 200 newtons. Claw size, 30 centimeters, which is still massive. 
and diet, omnivore. Okay, now to the advantages of Theri. Well, he's larger, he's heavier. You mean larger, longer, and taller. That, that's how you want to say it. He has a stronger bite, although he has a beak, so it doesn't matter. He has longer claws, which could be a disadvantage, because in a battle, I don't think having one meter claws is going to aid him. It's going to no matter what. Like, they could also be used as self-defense. Yes, they can be used as self-defense too, to intimidate others, you know, slap some fools, besides just grabbing vegetation. I know Jurassic World Dominion had a different idea, but they don't seem practical. I'm going to have to side with Dominion for this one. Like, every animal has some sort of self-defense mechanism. Even things like pigs and capybaras, they could use, they could have self-defense as well. Every animal needs self-defense. Okay, now to the disadvantages of Theri. Well, he's slower and he has longer claws. Actually, now that I think about it, it could be a little bit detrimental, but at the same time, man, these claws, they are extremely intimidating, and the Stegnosaurus would not want to mess with that. So, I don't know, I'm confused about this one. Okay, now to the advantages of Stegnosaurus. Well, he's faster. You could have the Mike Tyson advantage of, you know, being smaller, but still the peekaboo style. His claws are smaller, which could mean they're actually more suited to stabbing. But it would be more difficult to stab even with the increased mobility. Okay, now to the disadvantages of Stegnosaurus. He's smaller, he's lighter. Smaller, shorter, and shorter. He has a weaker bite, but it doesn't matter because beaks ain't gonna do much damage. Actually, they could still be used as self-defense, you know? Hatrosaurs can bite their predators in self-defense. And he has... Now, nah, I'm not counting it as a disadvantage. Okay, let's fight. Therian Segno, meter to clearing. As a part of a sick experiment, InGen has pumped the smaller Segnosaurus full of steroids and LSD. What in the absolute hell are you even talking about? Segno rushes towards Theri and stabs him straight in the stomach. Theri's normally a peaceful creature. No, herbivores are actually notorious for being extremely violent. Just look at rhinos. But this little ADHD bastard has really pissed him off. And he slashes far and wide, injuring Segno. Just a little slash. Why didn't the Theri just plunge its claws into the Segno's stomach? Uncharacteristically, Segno tries to bite Theri using his beak, but it does little damage. Theri slashes again, it's a direct hit. But this little drugged up Joe Pesci just won't quit. He stabs Theri in the stomach again. Theri's had enough. And remember the scene from uh, episode three, Anakin Skywalker and Count Dooku? Yeah, it's game over time. Fatality. Uh, more likely scenario is that Theri just stabs through Segno's neck, killing it instantly. Verdict. It's actually a tough one. Um, when you use the Mike Tyson analogy, uh, Segnosaurus could have an advantage. Plus his claws could be used as stabbing weapons. I don't believe that Therizinosaurus could use one meter long claws to stab. I mean, they're just too heavy. But uh, oh, it's a tough one. I'm gonna give 60% to Therizinosaurus. In my opinion, probably 80 to 90 in favor of Therizinosaurus. Probably 95 as well. Like. This fight is just lopsided. Based on his sheer size, but these two dinosaurs would never fight anyway. What do you think? And also, which two dinosaurs should battle next? And I might make it. Until next time, I've been VK. Subscribe to my first channel. We discuss alien stuff. And check this out. <sighs> these videos, man. Okay, okay, okay. It's probably not... Too bad, but at the same time, uh, I just don't buy much of it. Thank you guys for watching. See you all next time for Utah Raptor Jurassic Fight Club.